thinking about buying a Gen 4 NVMe drive? Well, before you do, watch this video. And if you've already bought one and you're having issues, watch this video. I'm gonna walk you through some real case scenarios and explain why you might have slow write speeds and my, why you might wanna buy one over the other depending on the scenario you're in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos and today I'm taking you down the rabbit hole with me that I went on. The journey was legendary. I spent over a week Hours upon hours doing tests. I'm going to show you all these tests so you can make an informed decision before you go buy one of these drives. Now, you're probably asking, why did I spend uh, money to buy all these drives and, um, and, and what ended up happening? So I'm going to get into that story in a sec. First things first, for those of you who are just starting to get into the research, these are Gen 4 drives. I have a Western Digital Black SN850. This is the Samsung 980 Pro and the Sabre and Rocket Plus, not the regular one, the Plus. These drives are hitting uh, speeds of up to 7,000 megabytes per second in the read, and then of course in the write, it's five to 6,000, depending on the size. These are the sequential speeds. Okay, let's really put this in perspective, sequential. Not the random, it's not the uh, idea of, hey, it's all that fast. So you gotta be aware of that when you're moving to one of these drives. That being said, I am coming from the uh, evil 970 and I had a 960 Pro, which uh, conveniently died on me um, and I had to spend more money. And uh, this was a crucial that I've had as a backup and uh, I've used it on and off. So uh, a slower drive, uh, but this one gets a speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes per second for the read and about 2,300 uh, on, the, um, on the right. So these are pretty good drives and it's great. Now, if you have a new PC that can support these drives, which would probably be that you are on an AMD Ryzen uh, newer chip, then yes, these would be great for you. And with your motherboard, with your M2 slot, you are gonna be able to achieve these speeds. If you are not achieving these speeds and you gotta check out your hardware, make sure it's all good. But with the new system, with 128 gigabytes of RAM on there, I was looking at everything and I go, why not upgrade? It's gonna be beneficial. And of course, um, from the stats I got in the comparison of the Gen 3 to the Gen 4, and with the speed of everything, it's definitely worth it. Uh, the, the upgrade is awesome. However, what is the rabbit hole? And how did I get here? This is the Sabre and, uh, Rocket Plus. Originally, I am a Samsung guy. I'm committed to them. I love these guys. However, they didn't have a two terabyte. I was looking at the four terabyte. I saw the one terabyte um, and I was like, oh, okay, let me check this thing out more. The four terabyte is the regular speed of the Gen 4, which was only up to 5,000 megabytes, uh, right? And then I saw these ones and I go, why not just try these out? Let's try these guys out, see how they go. And there were so many good reviews. I never checked the bad reviews. I only checked the good reviews. And then primarily because I saw these reviewers going, oh my God, this is like the fastest thing ever. And it's great. And I was like, oh my God, yes, let's do it. And I got all hyped. And I, I didn't do my due diligence. Now, I got this drive, awesome drive when you get it. It's great. Now, if you go and look at the negative reviews, it's usually that they slow down, especially on the right speed when you've used it for about two, three months. And uh, the idea on this, I will go into a deeper story about the company and how everything was handled and how annoying it was and how I will never use Sabre again. That being said, I purchased this. It was working fine. It was great. I did see some issues. It was slowing down. It was uh, having some instabilities. And I was like, uh, and then the 960 crashed. I, I, I thought maybe the 960 was the issue. However, I went and purchased one of these two terabytes. There was on sale, hundred bucks off. I was like sold. And I mean, uh, Samsung ha helped me out with the warranty on the 960, which was great. And um, yeah, everything is awesome because you get this two terabyte and this is awesome. And I was like, I don't need anything else. This is great. And then I install both and I realize this has issues. And the issues are caching. 
I've, I attempted to look at temperatures. I attempted to do different uh, tests on it. And I realized that this drive, there's something wrong with it. Let me do more testing. And I did some testing on both of these. And as I was talking to the company, and uh, long story short, I was like, this is not going to be sticking around with me. I can't trust this. And I can't trust the company. I can't trust anything about this. Um, and uh, long behold, uh, I will show you the stats on what happened with this in a sec. The next thing I did was I looked at this drive and I didn't have any caching issues with this and I go what if it's because it's two terabytes and that's where the caching issues are occurring so I went out and bought two of these two tests because I'm not going to sit around and uh, play around with uh, which one to buy I was going to go right for the Samsung but then I thought and I saw some reviews and I thought what am I doing let's uh double check and see um our testing and see what happens beforehand and long behold uh the results are in as you can see, I've done many tests here and uh, they are plentiful. There were different scenarios that came into play and I added more and more different type of real world scenarios. I also did a Gen 3 comparison with the Gen 4s just so I can see what is going on. And uh, those file sizes were the 4K shoot with 45 gigabytes, uh, 4K shoot with 90 gigabytes, and these are all 4K videos. And of course, B-roll clips about 20 seconds each, 85 gigabytes worth, photos and video with no 4K, and then photos and video with 4K. 4K and these were the bigger file uh, folders that I was transferring and of course the random files that exist in there there's about 5700 files in there now you can see from the older tests I just did a simple run through and by the time I had purchased the other drives to test them out I was doing uh, many tests here uh, simple reason for this is the fact that I did some tests and uh, the issue occurred where uh, the, the drives, when they were in the top spot versus the bottom spot, they would, uh, in, the, in the slots on my motherboard, I would see some inconsistency here, and that it was kind of constant. It was 6200 instead of 68, 6900. Um, and you can see here, this is on the top, and you're seeing these massive speeds. So, um, the idea now becomes, well, what's the issue? I called Samsung, they're telling me that uh, there are minor differences. And uh, at first they were telling me they're working on it and now they're still working on it and blah, 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 blah. So I had to take into account that inconsistency, uh, of course. And um, I had to look at everything face value so I know that I'm making the right decision. So I did way more tests. Now, um, what were the results? Well, we see the results here in the writing to the SN850. So this is really testing the reading to the SN850 from each drive. And I'm seeing that the 4K shoots at 45, 90 gigabytes, these are all pretty much equivalent in, in speed. However, um, I, I do see the Western Digital picking up on the uh, speed here. That's great if you're working with these size folders when you're transferring. And of course, then we look at the B-roll, we look at the random, and you can see that they're pretty much equivalent. So if you're going to go with one drive or the other, and you're and what is this really testing? I'm moving these folders over. They got random files in there, 46 gigabytes worth, 46.6 or whatever it was. So the thought would be that the Samsung is performing better by very few seconds, but it's performing better on the random, which means that if you're using any software, this is like where you want to be at. And uh, the idea now becomes, well, w what's happening with the Sabrent? And then the Sabrent's just increasing its uh, time to move stuff when it's in bigger folders. That being said, this is reading. And I just don't see why this is occurring um, with the Sabrent because it's supposed to be the fastest of the bunch however um you know that's and that's what people say i'm not sure where they're getting that from uh you do have and maybe it's just per cost right because it's a cheaper drive uh by about 20 30 bucks now you have the the um the saber compared to the western digital and then you have the samsung just pulling through on the read however the important stuff is the right of course and um on the right we can see that it is outperforming on the smaller by one second it's not a big deal uh, on the b-roll we can see that the and I tested this several times and this was just killing it, it killing it. And it was killing it in random on writes. Okay. So this is really telling us that the write speed on the one terabyte is doing a phenomenal job. So if you're a professional, this is what you're looking at. 
especially when you look at it on the bigger sizes. And you're probably wondering, because you're probably looking at this, why is this 111 seconds? Hey, guess what? I ran this test several times and I got the same results. And I, I did it in different sequences. So I can see, hey, maybe it's a caching issue, maybe it's a memory thing. And, it's, you know, and I was like, I was trying a whole bunch of different stuff. And the idea now becomes, well, what's happening here? Well, before we get into that, I also did some comparisons with the Gen 3 drives. I'll be uh, linking the video below on this. And uh, the idea here is that these uh, Gen 3 drives, so what, what's the point of upgrading is the question in your case scenario. This chart tells you a lot because you're not seeing much of a difference down here, but you do see it in the random. And this is where you're affected when you're using software, you're using any small files, transfers, this, that. So you do see the speed pick up. Is it significant? No. When you get into the bigger sizes, yes. Uh, let's look out over at the other side where we're now looking at a bigger jump. And this would be the idea where you're 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 looking at it and you're saying what is my need that's it now if you're using this drive as a windows drive you probably won't notice a big difference um, you will notice it in the bigger software but only for certain tasks so if you're using premiere pro or anything like that just wait for that video uh, check it out in the link below and like i'm telling you uh, if you have one of these drives just buy buy the two terabyte if you're going to be a professional. Now, if you're a gamer and you're looking at these drives, um, loading is not going to make that big of a difference. Um, and, and you're really not going to find such a big increment with the Gen 3s. Going back to this a caching issue, and I want to show you a few things that I was looking at. And with Sabrent, you know, I, I looked at the temperature. I really did. And I looked at the temperature and I said to myself, maybe it's something happening with the temperature. And you can see I did a lot of tests on this and 91%. Um, uh, honestly, it wasn't the temperature. Then I started looking at uh, some other aspects of it, like, um, well, what's happening with the response time? So I started monitoring that. So it did go down to 0.2 milliseconds. However, we would see this occur. And this was an issue that was happening where the write speed would just drop, the response time just dropped. And did I see this in the uh, Western Digital? Yes. Now, did I have a caching is issue with the Western Digital? I noticed that there was some caching issues. However, it wasn't like, you know, it, 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 it kind of bottomed out and never came back. The issue here is that it would stay like this for the Sabrent. And it would stay like this for the Samsung. Now with the Sabrent, this would happen almost instantaneously. Like I would do like maybe 150 to 200 gigabytes of transfers. And at first I thought maybe like I was going overboard. So I was over 50%, 60% of the drive, 70%. And I know, you know, we, we were told not to write over 75% on these drives, um, which then begs the question, you know, what's the point um, of getting a terabyte? Because you're going to need more than that. So, uh, yay. Now, when you're looking at this, though, this was happening and it, we're literally seeing the slowdown. And then it doesn't come back, period. I had to format this drive to make it come back. I left it in there for quite some time, too. Um, a, a couple days, I didn't see anything uh, occur. Now, with the Samsung, on the other hand, uh, it did happen. And when it did happen, um, the idea now becomes, well, how long is it going to stay like this? And some people are saying the Samsung drives will be cleared out by six hours, some couple days. I had a format, so I, I didn't see uh, that occur for me. Um, if you're wondering how fast this drive uh, can go on a typical um, a setup, uh, like, again, you're, you're looking at it and you're saying... Um, uh, the speed can go up to 6,500 is the fastest I saw it. Uh, but, you know, this is like at 79%, which is awesome. So it was working at high levels. It wasn't that it wasn't, but once it, once it like kind of dropped in speed and never gained it back. Where the, um, you know, the SN850, it was a beast. And, you know, once it dropped, I saw a couple of drops where it came down to 3,000. Both the one terabyte and the two terabyte, this is, you know, going back and looking at this and you're saying to yourself, well, once it did this, how long did it take to recover? And uh, here I am just like erasing everything, trying to see if it's going to make a difference. And then it does make a difference um, when it had to. Um, but the idea now also, you know, if you're looking at this and you're saying to yourself, how does this fit the narrative? Well, this is a 79%. And this is the one gigabyte. Um, it's it's running full speed. 
I, I like I. Like I said, it would come back, it wouldn't be an issue, and we're off to the races. No complaints whatsoever. Before we go into a final thoughts about what you should be buying, what you shouldn't, to help you along your way with your research, as some things that occurred that you should know. This drive from Western Digital does heat up. You need a heat sink with it. When I used the heat sink that came with Asus and it was just a flat panel uh, heat sink, it did not do the job good enough. I literally bought another Sabrin heat sink, which by the way are awesome heat sinks. They make some good heat sinks. Um, and that worked and it did a great job uh, and it kept it down it's been doing uh, phenomenal. Both of these drives have been working well, but you need to use a heat sink or else they do shoot up to like 80, 90 degrees. And uh, uh, the Samsung 980 Pro, when I first used it, it just shot up to like 95, almost 100 degrees. I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, what's going on? I've never seen this before. Um, and then I had to format it and reinstall and it was a back to normal. So I'm not sure what happened with that. Something to think about and monitor as you're going with that. That being said, the two terabyte Western Digital did not need any updates. The one terabyte did, it did a firmware and then it was working properly. When you're looking at it from a perspective of software, there is a software with a game feature on Turn it on when you're running this drive. I'll be reviewing um, and I'll leave the link below uh, the more specifics of this drive. The uh, Samsung, I will also be doing a specifics of their software and uh, what is um, good to see with this drive. And of course, um, I'll have a complete review on this one, but uh, this drive, the support, oh my God. If something happens to this, good luck. That's all I gotta say because it's not their fault. It's not the drive's fault. Even if you go through all the emails that I went through, I'm telling you, it's not their fault. It's your fault. It's your system's fault. It's somebody else's, but these guys. Um, do they make a good drive? Yes. So my final recommendation here, would I buy this maybe for a gaming rig that's just going to run the windows on it? You can't transfer anything big. There's nothing there. If I got this for half price, which I've seen them go on half price, you know, then yeah, I would get one and I would just have it just for that, only Windows. I would still have another hard drive that does the job. Uh, this cannot do the job. I don't trust it with my data. I don't trust it with pretty much uh, anything to do with importance. Um, but if you're just building something that, you know, you're gonna get this cheaper half price, why not? You're good to go. At the same time, these prices are a little bit steeper by 30 or 40 bucks. Um, I would definitely pick one of these two. If you're just gonna be gaming, doing the bare, you know, everyday day-to-day -day stuff, uh, you're not doing big file transfers. I mean, this does, will work up to like, what, 400, 500, 600 gigabytes of transfer that I noticed. It was still working when it was up to 79 gigabytes. So, I mean, this does work you just have run that risk of one day you need to move like five or six or 800 gigabytes over to this and max it out um and you're gonna have that issue and you're probably gonna have to format after so other than that this is a great drive i like it, it, was, it was it was fast it was consistent we saw the results there uh, but at the end of the day i would definitely be looking at western digital all the way right now as it stands. That being said, we know there's firmware coming out for all of these drives for sure down the road. We've seen this before with the other generations. Um, and as of right now of the recording of this, the idea here is Western Digital, the two terabyte definitely. Uh, the 980 Pro will be coming out with their uh, two terabytes. So I'm assuming it will compete with this and the cache will work on that. Um, will I be keeping this right now? I'm waiting for Asus to get back to me to see if the issue is with this drive or if it is with the motherboard and what's occurring with that um, being said, um, I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to keep it. Hope this helped. Leave a comment below. What were your findings? If you have purchased one of these uh, drives, what do you, were your expectations? Were you happy, not happy? Um, if you have questions before you buy this, I'll leave your comment below, leave your question below. And of course, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on this channel where it comes to building a rig. I'm really trying to focus this on looking at it from perspective of uh, investment into the rig and uh, your workflow, creative side of things, not the gaming side, because uh, these are the questions I had when I was building my rig and um, I've put a lot of hours into this stuff to figure out what's what and I uh, I think it's beneficial for everybody.